break up with Gavin right now. I was dating him first, so Gavin belongs to me. You can't have him. I hear that you're going around telling people that you and Gavin are getting married, but I know that's not true. He would never marry you. Would you stop embarrassing yourself and give him back to me? You'll regret it if you don't do as I say. No, I'll make you regret it. Give him back while I'm still ready to forgive you for taking him away from me. Excuse me? Um, are you Gavin's ex-girlfriend? I don't know what your problem is, but don't plan on doing anything you just said. Gavin and I are engaged. There's nothing you can do about that. Don't call me his ex. I'm his girlfriend. I still am and always will be. Some random woman like you can't change that. I don't know what got into him to make him want to marry someone like you, but I know that it's all your fault. You must have tricked him. Will you stop getting in the way and leave us alone? You're really causing a lot of trouble. You should be ashamed of yourself. Besides, do you really think anyone would marry an old woman like you? Oh, please. You're making me cringe just thinking about you in a wedding dress at your age. Hey, don't get ahead of yourself. I understand that you're upset, but that doesn't mean you can be childish. Gavin chose me. Accept that. I didn't do anything to trick him, and if anything, you should be embarrassed of yourself for making a fuss when Gavin's already made his decision. There is no point in getting hysteric just because you're not the one that he's gonna be marrying. Sorry for being an old woman, but Gavin chose me despite our age gap. So, tough. Anyway, why do you care how old I am? I'm still in my 20s. How could I lose to an old woman like you? I'm younger and prettier. Of course I'm the better choice. Way better than some 30-something-year-old woman like you. Ugh, why would Gavin choose you over me? I don't understand it at all. Why are you asking me? Why don't you hear the reason from Gavin himself? Maybe hearing from him directly will make giving him up easier. Why do you even know my number? I don't think we have any friends in common, and Gavin knows that I don't like people sharing my number without my consent. How could you have found out how to contact me? Anyway, I'm gonna block you, so stop bothering me. I wish you all the best in your new life without Gavin. You really should learn when to give up. You can't obsess over him forever, you know. It's already been a couple of years since I started dating him. But if you still haven't been able to get over him, you're just gonna suffer more. It's not good for you. It's already decided that Gavin and I are gonna get married. So you've just got to accept that. I'm not lying and I haven't tricked him. We're just in love. I took your phone number from Gavin's contact list on his phone. Okay. I really think that you need help. You're not gonna like it, but that's called being a stalker. Hang on. How did you even get his phone in the first place? Gavin and I started dating after the both of you broke up. How could you have gotten my number unless you've seen him recently? You can't marry him. Gavin is mine. You don't have the right to be with him because he was with me first. I'm going to take him back from you, no matter what it takes. I suggest that you give him up first if you don't want to get hurt. He's going to choose me anyway, when he realizes what a mistake he's made. What are you talking about? He doesn't belong to you. He doesn't belong to anyone. He's not a thing. And he's chosen me. So you should accept that. But I have something I want to ask you. You better break up with him. I'm not going to forgive you if you marry him. He's mine and only mine. Your name's Kaylee, right? Are you listening to me? When did you last see Gavin? Peyton, sorry. I know you're going to hate me for doing this again, but I was suddenly asked to attend a business meeting with a client at work, so I can't see you tonight. I really wanted to go and see that movie with you, but it looks like we're going to have to go another day. I'm really sorry. I promise I'll make it up to you. All right, I guess we can go next week instead. Gavin, before you go, I have something I want to ask you. Do you have a few minutes? What is it? Is something wrong? <laughs> Your ex-girlfriend. Her name is Kaylee, right? Yeah, it is. Why? What's up? Why are you suddenly asking about my ex? Oh, well, she messaged me yesterday. I tried to ignore her, but she was being really persistent. But I was wondering how she got my number in the first place. Did you tell her? What? Kaylee messaged you? Seriously, what did she say? She told me that she took my number from your phone, but she could have only done that if you've met up with her since we started dating. Have you? I thought you said you didn't want to see her anymore. Of course I haven't met her. You can't believe everything she says. 
Don't you trust me? She's just trying to make you suspicious of me. So that she can try and break us up. Don't you remember me telling you how obsessive she was? She was really dependent on me for everything and was jealous all the time. That's why I left her. Because I couldn't handle how clingy she got. And that's why you can't let her go to you. She still has a thing for me. But that doesn't mean anything to me. Trust me, you can't just let her ruin our relationship when the wedding is just a few weeks away. Just block her and ignore her. If she tries to message you again and act as though nothing happened, she'll get tired of it sooner or later. She's just my ex. She can't ruin what we have right now. Of course, I can't just ignore her. How can I do that when I feel like you're not telling me the truth? If you say that you haven't met her, then how does she have my phone number? She couldn't have got it from anyone else. So the only person we have in common... Yeah, that's true. Well, I might have actually told her your number in the past. I'm sorry, but I only told her because she was saying stuff like I won't forgive you if you don't tell me and you'll regret it. She was saying all sorts of weird stuff. I mean, she always does. So I thought that she might try and bother you if I didn't tell her. I really think that there is something wrong with her. So I felt it was best to just do what she wanted. And I told her your phone number. I mean, I thought it was better than her trying to get closer to you. She really does get jealous, so I don't know what she might do. But the worst case scenario I was imagining was that she might try and hurt you. And I really don't want that. If that's why you told her, then why didn't you warn me? You should have given me a heads up that your jealous ex-girlfriend might try and get in touch with me. And maybe I'd been able to block her beforehand or something. You know, I don't like it when people share my number without me knowing. So can you please just ask me the next time someone asks for my number? I've already blocked her, but she's already creeped me out. And if she's that obsessive, then there's no telling what she might do next. It's still predictable if she buys a new phone just so she can get through. But what if she turns up at your house next? Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have thought a little carefully. I just didn't want to set her off. I'm sorry you had to go through that. I know it's scary, but I'm serious. Don't let her get to you. She's just trying to break us up. I'll talk to her and I'll try and get her to stop. So don't worry about her anymore. Yeah, please. I really don't want her to message me anymore. She really does her best to make me feel bad about myself and I can tell she's laughing at me. Gavin, you haven't cheated on me, have you? What? Of course I haven't been doing anything like that. Why would you even think that? I swear, I haven't even thought about anyone else except you. I'm sorry, I just... I had a bad feeling when I spoke with her. It was really like she knew something I didn't and it felt like she was laughing at me for not realizing. You haven't lied to me about something, have you? There is nothing else you want to announce other than the fact that you told her my phone number? Of course not. I would never lie to you. I promise. And it's not like I lied to you about giving her your phone number. It just slipped my mind to tell you. Peyton, please don't let her get to you. She really is just a crazy ex-girlfriend. Nothing she says actually means anything. She's just trying to make you doubt me, so that will break up. I'm not exaggerating when I say she's crazy. I broke up with her because she was really obsessive and manipulative. And I couldn't take how possessive she was anymore. But we're getting married in a few weeks, remember? Think about this rationally. I chose you. You don't have to think about anything else. Yeah, I understand what you're trying to say, but I feel like something's not right. It's really bothering me, so I can't help but think about it until I know what it is. Come on, you got to believe me. I haven't done anything. Why would I? We're going to get married. I'm going to become your husband. What are you going to do if you can't trust the man that you're going to spend the rest of your life with? We can't enjoy our married life if we don't have a relationship built on trust. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have doubted you so much. I'll try not to think about it. I'm probably overthinking things anyway. I'll just focus on the preparations for the wedding. Sorry I bothered you with something so stupid before your meeting. Don't worry about me and do your best. We can go watch that movie another time. Oh, yeah. I will. Don't worry. Just trust me. I'm sorry about the movie too. I'll make it up to you. We're still going to have dinner tomorrow, right? Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Peyton, what's wrong? Hurry up and come back to the hall so we can continue the service. Everyone is waiting for you. I know this is our big day, but we can't keep the guests waiting forever, you know. Wrong? Are you seriously asking me that? You saw what she did, didn't you? You were right there. You came after us when you saw that Kaylee asked me to have a chat, and you saw everything. So why are you so calm? Why aren't you angry for me? Peyton, I don't get what the big deal is. Don't be so dramatic. Just come back to the hall so we can continue. Where are you? You didn't leave the venue, did you? 
You must be joking. You think I'm being dramatic? Your ex-girlfriend slapped me in the face. I seriously thought that she just wanted to talk. But the second we moved around the corridor, she just turned around and hit me without any warning. So why are you acting as though nothing happened? Why didn't you even try and stop her? Oh, I can't believe you. All you said was, sorry, she's just a bit jealous, and walked on by. You're supposed to be the groom. Couldn't you at least ask her to leave? She wasn't even invited in the first place. Instead, you made it seem like it was a matter of course that I should overlook what she had done because she was just a little jealous. Why should I care if she's jealous? That doesn't give her any right to hit me. To be honest, I'm panicking because of how ridiculous this entire situation is. I'm not in any state to return to the hall. Oh, come on, Peyton. Don't be like that. Why are you making such a big fuss out of this? I said I'm sorry. It wasn't even me that hit you. She really was just a bit jealous, that's all. You should just loosen up a little. How can you say that? I don't even understand how you can actually play this down. Like, it was just a joke or something. She actually hit me. It's assault. And come to think of it, you were smiling earlier too when you passed us by. You didn't even look that shocked that she hit me. You may not understand, but this situation is a lot more serious than you think. Yet here you are trying to make it seem like it's not that big of a deal at all. If anything, you seem pretty happy. Am I wrong? Of course I'm not happy. But don't think that it's such a big deal. And I was actually pretty surprised. I didn't know stuff like this actually happened outside the movies. I guess this is what people call a catfight, huh? And I didn't know that Kaylee was that jealous. I really am sorry, seriously. I don't know what got into her. But I don't think she'll do it again. So don't worry. You don't seem very sorry at all. You seem like you're really enjoying this. Did you know that she was coming? I mean, I definitely didn't invite her. So you must have been the one that told her the date and the address. And now your ex-girlfriend's come and crashed her wedding. You're enjoying the fact that she's gotten jealous of the bride. It must be fun to imagine that there are two women fighting over you. But she crossed the line. If you were half the man I thought you were, then you should have stopped her. But you only laughed and made excuses for her. You must be kidding if you really think that this situation is for your entertainment. Peyton, I'm not thinking that at all. But seriously, I just think that you're making a big deal out of nothing. I was just laughing because I was surprised, I swear. I'm the one that was surprised. I was surprised that someone would even hit me. And I'm shocked that you were a complete bystander. You're acting like it was none of your business. You're supposed to be my husband. Don't you feel anything if your loved one is treated like that? I'd understand wanting to leave us to it if we were just arguing. But she resorted to violence and you didn't lift a finger. You like that she was jealous enough to hit me. Why are you so angry? Like I told you, it's not like I was the one that hit you. And today is supposed to be a special day for us. It's the biggest day of our lives. Don't ruin it by getting pissed off just because Kaylee got a little jealous. <laughs> you may be older than her, but you've still got a long way to go before you grow up, Peyton. Excuse me? I'm the one that needs to grow up? You're saying that to the woman who got slapped in the face. To your wife. And what are you still laughing about? This isn't funny. Calm down, Peyton. You don't have to be that angry. You're being really dramatic over a slap. I just don't want you to make a bigger deal out of things than what's necessary. And you're going over the top. We're supposed to be celebrating. So by getting into a really angry mood, you're just being all childish and ruining everyone else's happy mood. Can you just hurry up and sort out your attitude because everyone is waiting? How about you tell that to your ex-girlfriend? And by the way, it wasn't just a slap. She slapped me twice on both sides of my face. I was so surprised that I couldn't do anything. Why am I suddenly the bad person? I hate to make our guests wait, but I think they'd give me a break if they knew what happened. Do you really think that there's any point in telling her? She is still in love with me. She can't help but be jealous. She must have come to the venue knowing that she would have to have a showdown with you. You gotta hand it to her. She has guts. But too bad for her. I'm already yours. Anyway, she's just a little bit jealous and slapped you. That's all. Let's just forget about it and get on with the ceremony. Come on, stop pouting and come back to the hall or just tell me where you are. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I've already called my lawyer. What? Why would you do that? No way. You're actually asking me why? Because of you and your ex-girlfriend. That's why. I've had enough. What are you talking about? Why would you have to call a lawyer? Let's calm down and talk about this first. Don't make me laugh. It's already past the point where we can just talk this through. You don't care about how I feel about the situation. You're enjoying this. I want my lawyer to help us deal with this. We can make plans to meet all together someday. Right now though, 
I'm gonna meet with her and explain the situation. You can stay in the hall if you'd like, but either way, the wedding is cancelled. I'm not coming back. What? What are you talking about? You can't just decide that without me. I'm really going to get angry if you keep on making stupid threats like that. Peyton, are you listening to me? Hurry up and come back to the hall so that we can continue the ceremony. We're all waiting for you. You're just going to annoy our guests if you don't hurry up. Shut up, Gavin. I'm not gonna marry you. Accept it. What? Did you just tell me to shut up? So what if I did? You need to listen to what I'm saying. It seems like you don't understand how serious the situation is, so I'm going to explain it to you. Even before today, your ex-girlfriend was threatening me, sending me messages incessantly, and was already doing things that could be considered stalking. And today, she's finally crossed the line and assaulted me. Do you understand what that means? Well, if you have to say it like that, then yeah, it sounds bad. But you really don't have to be that harsh. She really is in love with me, that's all. But she couldn't help it, you're just exaggerating. Yeah. It sounds bad because it's a crime. And yet you think I'm exaggerating? I'm talking with my lawyer now, and I'm gonna show her this conversation. So maybe you should take care with what you say. Yeah, you're just exaggerating. You've called a lawyer. How dramatic can you get? Peyton, why don't you just come back to the venue and let's talk about this. You don't need to bring your lawyer. We can talk about this without her. There's no need to go that far. <laughs> I don't know about you, but personally, I want a lawyer. This is assault. And now she's actually gone and hit me. Her threats are much more worrying. I don't want to just leave this problem undealt with and suffer something much worse down the line. I want to talk to someone who won't pass my worries off as me being dramatic. Yeah, alright. I get why you want a lawyer. But are you serious about the wedding? You're going to cancel it. Have you finally realized how serious the situation is? I hope you have because that's how serious I am about canceling the wedding. I regret that we ended up wasting our guest's time. But it's over. From now on, I want my lawyer to be our middleman. So if you want to contact me, I'll have to do it through her. We'll have to talk about this face to face sometimes. So I'd like you to bring your ex-girlfriend when we do. Of course, I plan on reporting this incident to the police. So you'll have to prepare to be questioned. And don't think about lying to defend your ex. I've already asked my parents to check with the venue regarding their CCTV. And apparently, they'd be happy to give us a copy. What? Are you really going to cancel the wedding? I can't believe it. Your parents are starting to make an announcement. Are you sure you want to do this? I can still stop them. Wait, they're telling everyone what's happening. Peyton, think about this. Are you sure you want to cancel this wedding? You can't undo this. Of course I'm sure. Is there a problem? Because I can't think of a good enough reason to continue it. I'm gonna cancel the wedding, and I don't plan on rescheduling. What are you talking about? You don't plan on rescheduling? Does that mean you don't want to be married? Just because my ex-girlfriend did something stupid doesn't mean that you have to go this far. Why do I have to get punished by something she did on her own? Are you actually going to pretend that our marriage never happened? I don't get why you have to do that. You're going way too far. Peyton, calm down and think about this. This isn't a dream. And you can't undo this when you realize that you made a mistake. This is reality. I don't understand what you're trying to say. You're the one that needs to calm down and look at what's going on a little more rationally. Of course I'd want to cancel our wedding if I'd been treated like this. I'm just glad that you didn't insist that we go to file our marriage certificate at the registers before we have the ceremony. Saves me the trouble of having to go through a divorce. What? You haven't even gone through the registry office? I thought that you'd already given it a day before yesterday when we signed it. No, I haven't. I never said that I would file it on the day either. I just kept it with me. I told you I had a bad feeling when I spoke to your ex-girlfriend, remember? You told me to forget about it, but I already decided that I wouldn't file it until I found out why. What bad feeling? I don't remember you saying anything like that. You're just imagining things, so forget about it. And I'm telling you, I did. The way you tried to steer me away from thinking about it then was suspicious too. Well, it turns out it wasn't just my imagination. I was right to doubt you. I thought I could forgive you for what you'd been doing, but being slapped by your ex-girlfriend actually helped to wake me up. Plus, you couldn't even stop smirking when it happened. You didn't try to stop her. You didn't try to defend me. You were too busy enjoying the drama of having two women fight over you. But it helped me realize that I was making a mistake to even marry you. I really don't know what I was thinking. Why would you say that? I told you I'm sorry, okay? It's not even my fault, but I'm still being really sincere. The least that you could do is try and rethink cancelling the wedding. No, thank you. I'll stick with my decision and send you a bill for the wedding costs and compensation. Gavin, you can think that I'm stupid. I already know that you've been cheating on me. This is completely your own fault. We're finished, and you're gonna pay for it. Wait, what? 
What are you talking about? You're going to ask for a compensation and make me pay for the wedding alone? Even though you're the one that canceled it? I canceled it because I can't marry a lying cheater like you. I'm going to demand the compensation I'm owed. And your affair led to the wedding being canceled. So you're gonna cover the full costs. Don't even bother asking me if I'm sure I'm not gonna change my mind. And I'm not gonna marry you. Why don't you enjoy the rest of your life with the woman you were cheating on me with? Oh wait, you were cheating on me with Kaylee, right? Ugh, I'm sure you'll be very happy together, since she can't accept you marrying anyone else and you're happy to defend her actions. You'd be perfect for each other. Wait a minute, so our relationship is actually over? You can't be serious. Please stop making weird threats, Peyton. Why would I want to marry anyone else? I love you. I only love you. I don't want to break up. Please don't cancel the wedding. You don't have to go that far. The guests all have left, but we still have the ceremony. Ask your parents to get the priest to come back. Stop messing around, Peyton. Let's get married and make each other happy. You're just overreacting. You must be joking. I've already made up my mind. I'm not coming back to get married. Who would want to marry an asshole like you? You're saying that I'm the asshole here? You're the one that suddenly decided to cancel the wedding without warning me. <sighs> Says the man who was cheating on me. You may have thought that you did a good job of hiding your affair from me, but unfortunately, you'll have to do a better job if you really didn't want to get caught. Finding out about your affair was enough of a reason to want to cancel the wedding. But I thought I should give you a chance and went on with it. For some stupid reason, I thought that once we were married, you would give it up and finally choose me. I thought that you'd stop playing around and treat me with more respect. When your ex-girlfriend hit me and you didn't do anything, I realized that you would never change. You're always going to be the self-interested, self-centered jerk. I can't imagine how things will go for you down the line if you continue to act like this. But why should I worry about you? It's none of my business anymore. I'm not marrying you. And that's final. We're over. All you can do from now on is talk about how we'll settle the compensation. I'd rather get it over and done with today. So, let's talk. That's the only reason why I'm coming back to the venue. Wait, Peyton. This is all just a misunderstanding. I was never serious about Kaylee. It meant nothing. Please, Peyton. Tell everyone you made the mistake. My mom and friends are really angry. They're all sending me messages and they sound really pissed about me for the affair. Please, I'll tell you the truth. I'll explain why this all happened. Tell them you made the mistake. I don't know where you're hiding, but you better come out soon. I want us to talk with my lawyer. I want to get the compensation and stuff sorted out as soon as possible so I don't ever have to talk to you again. No matter how much you explain, it won't change the fact that you were cheating on me and doesn't exempt you from taking responsibility for your behavior. It's all excuses anyway, right? Kaylee is my ex-girlfriend, but that doesn't mean that I have feelings for her. I would never choose her over you. She's in a lot of debt, so I never even thought about being in a long-term relationship with her, or even marrying her. I swear, I didn't want her to get dependent on me, so I was trying to put more distance between us. So I couldn't help but go with her when she asked me to. I was sleeping with her so that she wouldn't ask for any more. It wasn't anything serious. But then she started thinking that I was still in love with her and wouldn't let me end the affair when I asked her to. She just kept asking when our next date would be, even though I tried to tell her that I couldn't see her anymore. I was planning on ending it before the wedding, but she wouldn't listen to me. I really had no choice. It's not my fault, Peyton. You've got to believe me. I tried. <sighs> Typical. That's the exact same excuse every other hassle on the face of the earth makes when they've had an affair. You try to make it out to be someone else's fault, but really, it's all your own responsibility. The excuses you made are so pathetic. It's embarrassing. I'm shocked that you have the nerve to say all that and think I still want to be with you. It seems you were hoping you could hide your affair and get married with me, none the wiser. But now that I've dumped you, I guess your evil plans have exploded in your face. I almost pity you. You can't imagine how disappointed you must be to lose me. But I feel great, knowing that I was able to avoid what could have become the worst mistake of my life. Peyton, please, I don't want to break up. I'll do anything to make it up to you. Please! Some of our guests were colleagues from work, and some of them were my managers. If you do this, it'll affect my work life too. They all heard your parents' announcements, and they all told everyone at work too. It's going to be really embarrassing for me to go back to work on Monday. Come on, you've got to tell them that it was a misunderstanding, or else it'll really be awkward when I see them all next. Please forgive me and I'll take back the announcement. If you've come back to the venue, then let's call all the guests back and have the ceremony. I don't think there's any point. Do you really think you'll have a job to go back to on Monday after this? 
What? Why would I lose my job? Didn't you know that the CEO of your company and I are related? Maybe I forgot to mention that. No, you're just messing with me, right? Of course I'm being serious. Did you really think that the CEO of such a big company would take the time out of his busy work schedule just for a regular employee like you? I guess you must have thought that that was a matter of course for him to come all this way, considering how big your ego is. But that's not the case. He came because he found out from another relative that I was getting married. He even prepared a lovely wedding gift. But thanks to you, his sentiments were wasted on us. Is that why he came? I didn't know, I swear. <laughs> You're the only one that didn't know. All of my relatives knew that you were working at his company and even mentioned it to him, you know? But now that I think about it, I think that might not have been a good idea for your sake. Now he knows you work for him and that you ruined our wedding day with your affair. I think he'll be having a hard time at the office from now on. What? Please don't leave me. Don't abandon me like this. If we don't get married, my entire life will be ruined. I'm sorry, please. I'm apologizing properly this time. I'm seriously sorry. I won't meet her ever again, and I promise I'll make you happy. It's too late to start apologizing sincerely now. And no apology will be enough to make me forgive you. After everything you've done. Goodbye, you piece of crap. You'd better hurry up and come out from wherever you're hiding so we can talk about how much you owe me. In the end, the wedding ceremony that my family and I had been so eagerly anticipating turned into a heated confrontation. Not the romantic celebration we had envisioned. The hall that should have been filled with joyous laughter was now the setting for tense discussions between me, my lawyer, and Gavin. My infuriated family members stood by, witnessing the unfolding drama as onlookers, unable to contain their anger. Gavin, on the other hand, found himself trapped in a living nightmare of insults and reproaches. He was concerned, with no escape from the torrent of blame coming his way. The anger in the room was palpable, and there was no escaping the consequences of his actions. To make matters worse, the colleagues who had been invited to the wedding had turned into a rumor mill. Word had spread about Gavin's betrayal, and the office environment he once thrived in had turned icy cold. The colleagues he had shared camaraderie with now shunned him, unable to reconcile his actions with the person they thought they knew. The CEO who had attended the wedding and witnessed the chaos firsthand made a consequential decision. Gavin's misconduct had consequences beyond his personal life. He was demoted and transferred to a remote branch office in another part of the country. It was a stark reminder that actions have repercussions, even in the professional sphere. Forced to accept the transfer to keep his job, Gavin's situation continued to deteriorate. The court had recently ordered him to pay me compensation covering not only the emotional distress caused by his affair, but also the financial burden he had imposed. He had to repay the wedding fees and cover the cancellation fee for the venue as well. His financial struggles were mounting, and he found himself sinking deeper into debt with each passing day. While Gavin battled with his own mental turmoil, it paled in comparison to the anguish I'd endured upon discovering his affair. It was a pain that cut deep, leaving scars that would take time to heal. His realization of the gravity of his mistakes came too late. A harsh lesson in appreciating what you have before it's lost forever. They say that the true value of something often becomes apparent only once it's gone. Gavin had learned his lesson the hard way, his recklessness and lack of appreciation leading to the loss of a woman who had genuinely cared for him. His belated realization was a bitter pill to swallow, a reminder that his actions had consequences far beyond what he could have anticipated. He had no one to blame but himself.